let's talk a bit more about backtracking. Today's topic is the power set. If you haven't heard of it, you've definitely seen it somewhere, probably disguised in some form or another. So what is the power set? In set theory, the power set is the set of all subsets of a set. If we have a set labeled S, then the power set is denoted as a function P of S. Below, I have a set with the elements A, B, and C. The power set of this set contains all eight possible subsets displayed below. Notice that the empty set is one of these possible subsets because this corresponds to not selecting any elements from S. Before we get too far into this, I want to share some quick facts about the power set that might aid in your understanding. The first is that the power set always has two to the n elements, where n is the size of s, the set we're taking the power set of. This is important to know because if we're generating sets and we want to store them in memory, then we have to store an exponential amount of sets proportional to the size of the input. In practice, you probably don't want to take the power set of a set with more than 20 to 25 elements due to the time and memory constraints. This next fact is really neat because of how central it is to the construction of the power set. The power set is the set of all subsets of different sizes put together. Set in other words, the power set is the set of all combinations of different sizes. This is cool because if you have a function that can generate all combinations of a certain size, like you would in Python, then you can easily generate the power set with perhaps two or three lines of code. Now let's talk about how we're going to use backtracking to generate the power set. A key realization we have to make is that each subset of the power set can be represented as a bit string of length n. By a bit string, I mean a sequence of ones and zeros. For example, consider the bit string 0, 0, 0. If zeros indicate that a particular element was not selected, then none of the elements in this set would have been selected, so we'd get the empty set. But now consider the bit string 1, 0, 1. This bit string would correspond to a set containing two elements, in particular A and C, because those are the elements with ones. Similarly, the bit string 0, 1, 1 would represent the set containing elements B and C, but not A. Let's look at a situation where we want to generate the power set for a particular set. In this case, our set contains an apple, a pear, and a carrot. We're going to use what we learned in the last couple slides to help ourselves. First, I'm going to generate all possible bit strings of length 3 because we have three elements in our set. If you know binary, all I have done is simply enumerate all the numbers from zero to seven inclusive on the screen. As a sanity check, you can also make sure that there are exactly two to the power of three bit strings. And indeed, there are. So for the first bit string of all zeros, this represents the empty set, so no items were selected. The second bit string, has its rightmost bit set to one. So that bit string represents the set of only selecting the caret. The next bit pattern has only the middle bit set, so that represents selecting the pair. This pattern continues on for each bit string, which produces a new set of unique fruits. In the end, we collect all the sets of fruits and that is our power set. Now the fun part. Let's look at some code on how we can use what we just learned about the relationship between bit strings and sets to actually generate the power set of a set. Here's some pseudocode on how we can generate the power set of a set using backtracking. The first thing I do is I declare all the stuff we'll need. In particular, and the length of the set we're trying to generate the power set for, an array, which I called B, which represents the current bit string, which is initially filled with all zeros, and lastly, an array of bit strings, which is going to be an array of arrays containing 
all our found bit strings like those in the table we saw in the last slide. I abstracted away the actual generation of the bit strings to a method called generate bit strings, which does the actual backtracking and fills the bit strings array, which we'll go over in the next slide. But once that is done and we've generated all our bit strings, the only thing left to do is to create all our subsets. This is, in fact, the easiest part. All we do is loop through each bit string array, and for each bit string array, check if the bit for each particular element is set to 1, and if so, add it to the current subset. We do this adding subsets to our subsets array, which we ultimately return as the power set. Now, let's look at the interesting bit, which is what exactly is going on in the generate bit strings function. The generate bit strings function takes three parameters. The first is the index we're considering. Then there's the array B, which represents the current bit string. And lastly is the bit strings array, which we append found bit strings to every time the base case is reached. The algorithm works recursively. As a base case, we check if we've generated a string of length n, and if so, add it to the bit strings array. Otherwise, we're still in the process of generating bit strings. To generate the bit strings, we make two recursive calls. One which considers including the current element, that is setting the bit to one, and the other which considers not including an element by setting the bit to zero. With only these two calls, we are able to generate all bit strings because for every position, either a bit is set or not set. Let's see what this looks like visually. First, we start with the empty state and i equal to zero. Then we do our two recursive calls. You can think of this as producing two new states where one state has a bit set to one and the other a bit set to zero. For each state, we do two more recursive calls. This produces states with longer bit strings built off previous ones. This procedure continues until we hit the base case, which is when our bit strings are long enough. All right, thank you for watching. And as usual, the source code for the power set can be found in my algorithms repository on GitHub at github.com slash slash algorithms. There should be a link in the description below if you want it. So thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more educational videos in computer science and mathematics.